Hey, sweetie. I just wanted to ask if you remembered that it was your parents' anniversary today. I didn't know if you wanted to do something for them. Maybe a meal somewhere nice? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, I'd completely forgotten that it was that time of year. Yeah, a meal somewhere nice sounds good. Could you set it up with my mom? I'm a bit busy at the moment, so I don't have time to message her and sort out all the details. Oh. Really? Don't you have, like, five minutes to talk to her? Come on, Nancy, don't start again, please. I'm very busy, and I don't have the time to talk to my mom for over half an hour. You need to get over this idea that she's trying to bully you or whatever. My mom is a lovely woman, and she can never do anything like that. She's probably just a bit shy, so she comes across like she's being condescending or rude or something when, in reality, she just doesn't know how to speak to you, okay? So just suck it up and talk to her. You'll see that you're just being ridiculous. I really don't think that she's being shy, Victor. Your mom simply doesn't like me. That's all there is to it. I have tried everything that I can to get on her good side. I've been polite, helpful, and cheerful. I've never been rude to her or tried to undermine her, unlike her. And yet, no matter what I do, Mary simply doesn't like me. There's literally nothing else that I can do. Every time I talk to her, she'll be completely horrible to me if no one is around. I honestly just think that you should talk to her and then everything will go smoothly. Look, I'm not going to entertain this ridiculous idea that my mom hates you. I've got stuff to do, so you need to make the call. I'm not going to say it again. Now, I need to get back to work. I'll see you later. Goodbye. See ya. Hi, Mary. I just wanted to say happy anniversary. I know you and John have been together for quite a while now, and it's lovely to see that you're still going strong all these years later. I hope me and Victor can be just as strong as you two. Oh, it's you. Yes, well, thank you. Although, I don't see what's so remarkable about it. If you young adults actually bothered to talk to one another and work to solve problems, there would be far less divorces in the world. I'm guessing you're one of these women who think that if they don't get their way, that it's okay to get a divorce? Ah, I believe that if it is needed, then a divorce can sometimes be the best option for couples. Although, it's always a last resort, as no one wants to separate from their partner if it can be helped. Uh-huh. Although, in all honesty, my Victor would be much better off divorced from you. After all, you're not really a good wife, are you? Yes, well... Good job that we both love each other very much, then, isn't it? Anyway, I've just messaged to ask if you would like me to set something up for tonight, for you and John. I asked Victor earlier, and he thought a nice meal somewhere might be a good way to spend the evening, if you'd like to. I just wanted to know if there was somewhere in particular that you'd like to go, so that I can book an appropriate table. Oh, joy. So I get to spend my anniversary evening with you? I honestly couldn't think of anything worse, to be honest. I mean... Why not just lock me in a box full of spiders? That would be much more preferable than having to spend an evening with you and listening to you droll on and on about boring things. Look, Mary, there's no need to be horrible. I wouldn't be the only one there. Your husband and Victor would be there too. Also, if you wanted to, you could invite other people. Honestly, we could actually just avoid each other all night if that's what you wanted to do. There's actually no reason for us to interact at all, apart from maybe saying hello and goodbye. I just think Victor would like to spend the evening celebrating his mom and dad's marriage with you, okay? Fine, but I'm doing it for my son and my husband. Don't think I actually want to spend any time with you. Fine. So how many people do I need to book this table for, and where am I booking it? Book it for the Watermill Inn for 7 p.m. tonight, and book it for 8. I'm going to invite my sister and her partner, and John might want to invite his brother and his wife. Okay, then. I'll get that all booked up. Oh, and you'll be paying for it all, won't you? Pardon? You heard me. You're going to pay for this meal, right? Well, I mean, I'm sure me and Victor can cover you and John as well as our own meals. I'm pretty sure that Victor would be more than happy to do that as a present to you too. But there's no way that we could afford four more meals on top of that. It would simply be too expensive. Well, that's not any good. If you're taking us out for a meal, then you need to pay for it. I never asked you to do this. You thought of this all yourself, so you need to fund it. You can't just pay for yourself and mine and John's meals and leave out the others. That would be incredibly rude. I mean, do you want it to look like I'm snubbing them? No, of course not. 
I don't want your sister and brother-in-law to think that you are purposely being rude to them, but the fact is that Victor and I simply couldn't afford to pay for eight people's meals. I mean, if each person's meal equals roughly $40, then that would be $300 on one meal. That's simply far too much money for us to be able to afford. It's really not so bad. You're just being cheap. I'm really not, Mary. But in case you've forgotten, I'm currently between jobs, so Victor and I don't have a lot of money at the moment. Oh, yes. I had forgotten that you decided to quit your job just so that you could leech off of my son. How is that going for you? Are you happy that you're being nothing but a drain on my son's life and resources? I didn't just quit my job, Mary. It's simply finished. It wasn't my fault that it went out of business and that because of that, I lost my job. And it's not like I've been sitting about and twiddling my thumbs. I've actually started a new college course which will help me progress my skills and allow me to apply for higher paying jobs. It's also in a career that I find incredibly interesting. So I am actually going to enjoy my job for a change. I honestly can't say that I care at all. I mean, you can try and spin it how you want, but the fact of the matter is that you are nothing but a poor loser who got fired because she was no good at her job. As well as that, you sound like a child when you say that you want to do a job that you'll actually enjoy. No one enjoys their job. It's simply work, a way to earn money. To actually try and get a job that you enjoy is something a child would say. Although I can't exactly say that I'm surprised by what you're saying. You're not exactly the brightest person I've ever met. Look, Mary, I've tried to be kind and polite and civil to you, but you clearly don't want to be the same way with me. So I'm going to tell you this now and I'm going to be honest. I don't like the way that you talk to me. You treat me as if I'm stupid and you are so horrible to me when I have done absolutely nothing to you. I am sick and tired of trying to be nice to you when you so clearly don't want to reciprocate the gesture. So from now on, I'm just not going to bother. If you want to be a horrible and unnecessarily vitriolic woman, then fine. But I'm not going to let you bring me down to your level. I'll be polite and civil with you tonight, for Victor's sake. But after that, I'm not going to bother with you at all. And that includes if and when me and Victor have children. What do you mean? Are you going to keep my grandchildren from me? No, of course not. I'm not going to go out of my way to bring them to you. If you want to see them, then either Victor will have to take them to see you, or you'll have to come to my house where you'll have to respect my rules. But that's not fair. It is more than fair. However, I'm not going to get into this with you right now. Instead, I'm going to book the restaurant and hope that this evening will be over and done with quickly. Just you wait. My son is going to hear about how you've treated me today, and then you'll be sorry. He won't let you get away with talking to me like that. I am his mother, and if you have any children, they're grandmother. I have every right to see them whenever I want, and I'm allowed to teach them whatever I want to, as I am the oldest and therefore wisest person they will know. Well, you're definitely old, that's for sure. I wouldn't say that you were wise, though. Why, how dare you? Look, Mary, I'm not going over this with you again. Tonight will be the last night we ever have to deal with one another again. Unless it's for something really important. I don't want to have to deal with you at all in my day-to-day -day life. Well, that makes two of us at least. But if you think that I'm not going to say anything to Victor, you're completely wrong. He's going to know exactly what kind of a horrible woman you are. God, I told him not to marry you. I said that he was too good for you and he still did it anyway. Guess he thought he was doing you a favor and was being charitable or something. I mean, no one would ever want to be with you otherwise, unless they did it out of pity. If you were so against him marrying me, why did he go through with it then? Is it because he actually loves me despite what you say? Oh, don't be ridiculous. He married you for your money. Huh? Yeah. He said that you earned a decent wage at the time and that he was going to marry you so that you could pay for the rent and the bills and stuff whilst he spent his money how he wanted to. But now that you're out of work, he's the one who's been stuck working a job he hates just so he doesn't wind up on the streets. Honestly, you need to take better care of your husband, Nancy. My son deserves much more than what you're currently offering him. Well, I think I'll be having a little word with Victor about all of this. For now, I'm going to go. I will see you later tonight, Mary. And that will hopefully be the last time for a while that I will see you. Likewise. 
Nancy, we clearly need to talk. The way you've acted tonight is simply not okay. You can't just storm out of a restaurant like that. You made me look like a complete idiot. I'm the one who's acted horribly? Were you at the same table I was? Your mom was the epitome of vile. She was laying into me and bullying me so much that I actually almost cried. Oh, you're overreacting. Just because she might have said a few things that you didn't like the sound of, doesn't mean that she was being horrible. You can't just handle being told the truth, that's all. The truth? You think it's true then? That I'm a horrible wife who can never do anything right and who would be better off gone? Uh, well... Nice. Thanks for that, Victor. I'm only your wife. Then, well, I'm tired of sugarcoating it for you. Sugarcoating what? Well, I'm tired of you. You're not a good wife and I'm sick of funding everything for you. I mean, honestly, you've been out of work for ages now and I'm tired of having to pay for everything. I have no money to buy things for myself anymore. Well, that's just kind of what being in a relationship entails. We'll have to be there for one another and look after each other when we need to. I mean, I looked after you when you were out of work. I paid for everything you wanted, along with the bills and the rent on the house. I think you can help out a little bit at the minute. Well, I don't care what you think. I don't want to be spending all my money on boring things, so I'm not going to. What do you mean? I'm not going to bother spending any more money on you and whatever you want. I'm just going to go and have fun doing what I want. But you can't do that. We have bills to pay and stuff. Nope, you have bills to pay. I have some brand new shoes to go and buy. Why are you being so obstinate? I thought we were in this together. Well, you thought wrong. My mom's hoping you'll become the perfect wife, but you're far from it. It was hilarious to hear it go off on you. <laughs> right. I've had enough. Leave my house immediately. Huh? You want to go off and tell me that I'm not a good wife? Well then fine. I'm done being your wife then. Done being my wife? Yep. I was waiting to see how you would treat me. What with how your mom was acting towards me as well. I wanted to see if you would back me up and stop your mom from being such a bully. But instead, you decided to be vile to me as well. Not to mention that I also know all about your girlfriend. My... What? What are you on about? Oh, you know, Clara? The woman you've been cheating on me with? That's who I'm on about. How did you... Your mom told me. During one of her rants where she was belittling me again, she let slip that you've been seeing someone else behind my back, saying that she can't wait for this other woman to become her daughter-in-law instead of me. So, I decided to look into it, and she was telling the truth. I've just been waiting to see if you would actually man up and tell me yourself. I guess I was hoping too much from you there. Well, wh whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't want to be with you anymore anyway. Uh-huh, whatever. However, because I am the one whose name is on the house lease, I'm the one who gets to decide who lives in it and who doesn't. And I really don't want you living with me anymore. You can go and stay with your new girlfriend. But the house is mine. I'll also send the divorce papers over to you within the next couple of days. So make sure you sign them quickly. H hang on. Also, you can tell your mom that I am so glad that I will never have to deal with her again. I'm finally free of her criticism and I seriously couldn't be happier. But... What? You're not supposed to be happy. Plus, you can't just kick me out of the house. I have nowhere else to go. I can't move in with Clara. Well, that's your problem now, isn't it? I'm sure your mom would love it if you moved back in with her, so why don't you do that? I don't want to live with my mom. Well, looks like you're out of options then. Oh well. Good luck, Victor. But I'm going to go and live my life free of you and your bullying and toxic mother. And I seriously can't wait for it. Bye. After telling Victor off and exposing him for the horrible man that he is, I went ahead and gave him the divorce papers. He tried to argue that the house should be his, along with half of my monthly income. However, the judge ruled in my favor. He said that because Victor was the one who cheated, he should be the one to pay compensation to me for emotional damages. I mean, I wasn't too broken up about it, but I am happy for the extra little bit of money. Since then, Victor and Clara broke up and he has had to stay with his parents whilst he tries to save up for a house. Can't say I envy him there. As for me, I found a job which is perfect for me. 
After graduating college, I was able to get a graduate job at an archaeologist firm, and since then, I've worked my way up the ranks a little bit so that I'm earning a decent amount of money. Whilst I might have lost my marriage, it wasn't really one worth mourning considering how he treated me, so I'm more than happy to go out into the world and find someone who is going to treat me right and like how I deserve.